take a moment to read this disclaimer. Welcome to Zen HVAC Micro Training Video Series. What you need to know, when you need to know it, in 10 minutes or less. Guaranteed. Today's topic using a pump curve to calculate water flow. First, who cares about water flow? You do. I do. Everybody does. Why? Let's see. Incorrect water flow can cause heating and cooling capacity issues, pump cavitation, poor chiller approach, cooling tower sump vortexing, chiller surging for centrifugals, and even hair loss. How can it cause hair loss? Simple. Because if you can't calculate water flow, you can't diagnose any of these problems and you're going to spend all day scratching your head. First, you're going to need an accurate water pressure gauge and a short length of hose. And the pump performance curve for the pump you're working with. Let's get started. Step one, we're going to go to the pump you're working on. We're going to find the information tag, and we're going to write down the manufacturer, the model number, the impeller diameter, and the motor RPM. Step two, we're going to find the pump performance curve online. Use your smartphone, go to your computer, all the manufacturers list these on their websites. Or if you're Patrick and you still think it's 1986, you can hobble over to your desk phone, call up the pump manufacturer, and then wait patiently by your fax machine for it to spit out a pump curve. I don't think so. It's not 1986 anymore. Use your smartphone. Step three, measure the suction and discharge pressures. We go to the pump, we take off those old gauges that have been sitting there for eons, and we're going to use our nice, shiny, new gauge and length of hose. We're going to connect it to the discharge, and we're going to take the discharge pressure. In our case, 30 PSI. Write it down. Then we're going to connect the same gauge to the suction. We're going to hold the gauge at the same height, and in our case, we have 22 PSI. Write it down. Step four. If the suction is positive, we're going to subtract it from the discharge. If the suction is negative, we're going to add it. In our case, it's positive, so we're going to subtract it. So 30 PSI minus 22 PSI equals 8 PSI. Pretty simple so far, huh? Step 5. We have to convert PSI to feet ahead. To do that, we're going to multiply 8 PSI by 2.31. And that gives us, drum roll please, 18.48 feet of head or 18 and a half. Step six, we're going to find 18 and a half on our pump curve. Here's our pump curve. On the left hand side of the chart, we have head pressure and feet. It goes zero to 48. And at the bottom, we have flow rate. So let's find 18. It is right between 12 and 24. Look at the red dot. Now we're going to draw an arrow across to the curve for our 4.75 inch impeller. Boom, right there. Now we're going to draw an arrow down to GPM. Right between 160 and 240, that is about 200 GPM. This pump is moving 200 gallons per minute of water. That was easy. You can now calculate water flow using a pump curve. Wrench drop. Yeah, I know it's a sorry take on mic drop. Points to remember. The pump needs to be running at 60 hertz. If it's got to drive, it's got to be up to full speed. All valves need to be open. Two, be sure you're using the correct curve for the pump. That means RPM, impeller diameter, and manufacturer, of course. Use one gauge for both readings, holding the gauge at the same height for both readings. Four, if the suction pressure is positive, subtract it from the discharge. If the suction pressure is negative, add it to the discharge. That's it. Let us know what you think, let us know how we can improve, and let us know what topic you'd like to see next. Thank you. Thank you for watching.